Hello, everybody. Okay, we are live on Facebook. Using this other program is going to get easier, I'm sure, but I still cannot work out when you begin to see me. So I think you might be watching me for a little bit at the start with absolutely nothing happening, just me drinking my coffee. But hello, uh, it's Thursday evening and I promised that on a Thursday night I would go through the workshop that I did on the Tuesday. So on Tuesday we went through splitting a day into three Thank you. Splitting a day into three, we looked at zone cleaning and I showed some 15 minute tidy up before and afters, thanks to Sarah Jones. So we're going to get through uh, that tonight. And I'm really pleased to hear that last week's very quick little workshop online helped a lot of people. I got a lot of private messages and that's what it's all about. So if you have heard about zone cleaning, 15 minute tidy ups, and of course, splitting your day into three, then perhaps this video is not for you, but I'm really just trying to do a few weeks, maybe four weeks worth of some of the beginning hints and tips I would give to people who are just starting out and are trying to get on top of things. And the more hints and tips I can give you, the better, and then you can decide what's going to work for your family and you can choose where you're going to start because I would not recommend doing everything at once. I would just begin with one strategy, get on top of that. And when that feels normal, then move on to the next one. All right. Let me share my screen. Just a reminder that while this is live, I can't see any comments. So I do still appreciate all the hellos and I appreciate all the interaction. Uh, of course, if I didn't get interaction, it would be really odd me just talking to myself. But when the video is finished, then I will uh, jump back over and and check any questions and make sure that I answer them on the thread. I think Tim has the live video going. He is watching the kids, so he might be preoccupied. But if he spots any questions, he might come past and just let me know and I can go through them live. All right, let's share this screen and then we will get started. Okay. All right, I think we're good to go. So again, I have worksheets. I also have my coffee, decaf coffee, because it's been a big day. So I might do the presentation tonight alongside the coffee. Uh, but these are the worksheets in the background there that you can see, like I did last week, I will make sure that I share those with you. So what I did for last week's little workshop was I uploaded this live broadcast to YouTube and then I added it to Facebook on Tuesday and created a Dropbox link for you to download those printables for free if they are going to be useful. So they are the printables that you can see in the background. It just has a summary of the three hints and tips and that we're going to talk about tonight and then it has a few questions for you to think through and of course some space down the bottom for you to set up your zones you don't still have it going live if you spot any questions do you mind just letting me know a bit later on thanks darling okay the first one is splitting your day into three now in my lbd planner which some of you may have and some of you may not have it's completely i'm in october planning out october at the moment so i have to flick back a little bit in my now it's a very small screen the top that you can see there but in my lbd planners i have actually created the layout to allow you to separate your day into three sections that is your morning afternoon and evening and this is something that really changed the way my day ran if i had a big day or if i was feeling overwhelmed and i still use that strategy i use it every day i used it today today was a particularly big day and i just find that splitting a day into three gets rid of that overwhelming feeling of wondering how you're going to get through your day. So the three ways that I split up my day, are firstly, the first section of my day, I uh, sectioned out to be before 12 o'clock. Then the second part is between 12 and five. And the third part is between five. And obviously when I go to bed, what you call the three sections is completely up to you. And you decide what times work for you in the planner. It's morning, afternoon, and evening, but I'm fairly uh, time specific about what I want to achieve before 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Then what will I achieve between 12 and five? And lastly, what will I achieve uh, after five o'clock? All right, so here's a day in the life. I just took note the other day of a few of the things I needed to get done in a normal day. Now, that is not a day that was particularly busy by any means. It was just me taking some notes of the things that we get done in a day that sometimes we don't even stop 
and realize how much we are doing. So it was obviously a school day and I had to drop the kids off to school. We had to pay our car registration and boat registration. I had to do a load of washing, tidy the master bedroom, make a doctor's appointment. I needed to be at work from 8.30 till 2.30 and that is actually not true. It should have been 7.30 till 2.30 on that day. I had to pick the kids up from school, take a load to the dump. I had some cardboard boxes that didn't fit in the recycling bin and I needed to take those cardboard boxes to the dump to recycle. I needed to drop cushions to the charity bins, reschedule a hair appointment, make lunch boxes for the next day, make dinner. And then of course the kids had their homework and their reading to do. So like I said, it's not a particularly busy day. That is just a standard day. And if you took note of the sorts of things you did in a day, you might find that you actually do more than those things. Now, looking at that, if I jot that down in the morning, like I had there, uh, I'm starting the day really uh, thinking or really overwhelmed by how much I have to do before the day even begins. So here's what it looks like when I separate it. What I did was I really thought about the most efficient way and time effective way to get through my day. And of course, uh, there have been times before where I haven't done this and I can certainly tell you stories of the time that I've wasted when I haven't done that. And uh, for example, if I have to drop things to a charity bin and I don't stop to think about the best time of the day to do it, what happens is I take the boys to school and then drive to work and then I pick the boys up from school and drive home and I pass the charity bin in each of those trips. So so by me stopping and thinking about where to put things and the best time to do things, I actually save myself time in the long run because instead of coming home, picking up the load to go to the charity bin and then heading back out, having it prepared in the car already means that I can do it either when I'm dropping the kids off to school or when I'm picking them up. So using that day in the life that I showed you on the slide before, here's how I separate it. So in the morning, I know that I have to go to work at 8.30. That needs to happen in the morning. And I needed to drop the kids off to school. So they were two things that had to happen in the morning. Uh, in the afternoon, I was obviously going to be finishing work at 2.30. And I also needed to pick up the kids from school. So they were non-negotiables. And then most Commonly, you make dinner after 5 p.m. in the evening. Of course, if you are not at work, you might choose to do it earlier on in the day. But for us, dinner needs to be made at nighttime. So that needed to be after 5 p.m. And the homework and reading made more sense to me in the evening than it did in the morning. So there were a few things that I put straight into the morning, afternoon and evening sections. And then I worked out what was left on my list and decided the best place for them to go. Now, you can see that in front of you there. But I tidied the master bedroom and did the load of washing in the morning. Doing the load of washing in the morning made more sense because I knew that it would be dry by the time I came home rather than hanging it out in the afternoon or the evening. And uh, then in the afternoon, I decided, like I spoke about before, if I had that load in the car ready to go, I could do that charity bin trip and the load to the dump while I was out getting the kids and after I'd finished work. Uh, I don't know about you, but if I get the kids home, unload them from the car and then tell them we need to go back out fairly soon after, it is not super easy. So the kids are ready to wind down at home. They want to spend some time running around outside and they're not really keen to go out which of course, sometimes you can't help. But on this particular day, I could help that. And so I made sure everything was in the car ready for that afternoon. I also decided that I could make the doctor's appointment and reschedule my hair appointment in the afternoon. And then the evening that would just leave us with uh, the homework and of course, paying registrations online once the kids went to bed. Because when you are paying things online, you of course have the beauty of paying those bills after hours. Now, if you look at each of those separately, no part of the day seemed to be particularly overwhelming. So in the morning before I left to take the boys and go to work, I just needed to give the bedroom a quick tidy up and hang that load of washing. In the afternoon after I picked them up, I was just doing that trip to the charity bin and the dump and then making the appointments. And then after five o'clock, I decided that I would join the dinner and lunch boxes together. So making lunch boxes at the same time as dinner is a good uh, time saving tool if you're short of time, because while you're in the kitchen and making a mess or you're waiting for something to cook on the stovetop, you can, of course, be preparing the lunch boxes. And uh, what that goes to show is just how much easier and simpler my day looked than it did when it was all in one long list. So I actually completely avoid, once I've set out my day, I don't look at the two other parts of the day. I focus solely on 
the one part. And then once I finish the morning, I move on to the afternoon. And then once I've achieved that, I move on to the evening. And so at no point in time do I feel like I have eight or nine things to do. I am just going through each section of the day. Of course, it takes you five minutes to plan out your day every morning. But I promise you, if you take the time to plan out your day, you're going to get that five minutes back plus more as you go through the day and you save that time that you might have spent wasting like I talked about that charity bin trip so that is what splitting your day into three looks like all right morning routines morning routines are something that I think uh, you know morning routines are so so important they look different in everyone's homes particularly if you have newborns remembering that if you have a newborn baby now is probably not the time for you to be hard on yourself about the time you need to be up or the things you need to do you just simply need to focus on uh, what you need to do to get through the day and make yourself feel better uh, so I'm not talking to newborn mums here I'm talking to mums that have kids that are in a bit of a better bedtime routine uh, or evening routine. Now, your morning certainly does set the tone for the day. And uh, what you do might be different to the person next to you. And that's the beauty of online communities is being able to see how different everyone is. Uh, but here are some things that you might try. So aim to wake up at the same time each day. I won't go into too much detail on that one. But if you want to look at some research documents online about the importance of waking up at the same time and the benefits that has as opposed to waking up at different times every day, all you need to do is Google it. You'll see so many research articles about that. It really does help your body clock. And that's where you hear people that say they wake up just as their alarm is meant to go off because their body is ready to get up at that time and it's sort of programmed to get up at that time. So it makes sleeping in certainly a little bit trickier if you want to sleep in sometimes but aiming to wake up at the same time each day really does help the way that you feel not hitting the snooze button now on Tuesday I spoke to the group of people that I was presenting to and I asked them how many hit the snooze button and so many do it's very normal many many people hit the snooze button but again there is a lot of research behind the fact that uh, setting a goal for yourself at night time to wake up at a certain time and then ignoring what you are trying to achieve hitting snooze and going back to bed really doesn't set you up for a great start to the day so I recommend to people if you are trying to get Get yourself out of the habit of hitting snooze don't try and do it every day don't set yourself the task of from tomorrow morning never hitting snooze because that is really throwing yourself into the deep end but what I recommend that you try and do is set a day that you say to yourself you're not hitting snooze when the alarm goes off you're getting up and when that becomes normal then try and do two days a week and three days a week until it seems a little bit easier but certainly there are a lot of people that set their alarm and then press snooze for half an hour to 40 minutes. If you know you're going to do that, set the alarm for the time you actually need to get up and uh, teach yourself or program yourself to actually get up when the alarm goes off. And of course, if you've set a goal to wake up at a certain time the next day and then you achieve that straight up in the morning, you get up and you start your day, then you've achieved your first goal uh, before you really even got out of bed. And that's a really good mindset tool as well. So trying not to hit that snooze button. Eating a good breakfast, you'll hear about all the time. Uh, a lot of people push themselves for this one. This is certainly one that I've struggled with over time. I think you need to find a breakfast that's easy but that you'll look forward to. If you are aiming to make bacon and eggs every morning and you live a really busy lifestyle, it's probably not going to work for you uh, if you're racing out the door every morning and your mornings are chaotic. So what I recommend is looking into a breakfast that is easy for you to prepare and easy to have ready. Now, one of the most common examples you'll see online or the example you see the most of is overnight oats because you can uh, put the oats in your jar, fill it with water or whatever you're choosing to use, milk, berries, etc. And then in the morning, grab it and it's ready to go. So there are a number of breakfasts you can prepare the night before. Doesn't have to be extravagant. It can be something little, but starting your day with a breakfast is a really good thing. Planning out your day, which is what we talked about when we talked about splitting your day into three. So just taking five minutes in the morning to think about what it is that you need to achieve that day or what you want to achieve that day. And before your day really begins, having a goal. Uh, choose your list of three, 
split your day up and set out to achieve what you want to do. If you leave that until the evening to think about what you needed to achieve that day, obviously you're going to achieve less and you're going to have a bit of a stressful evening. So taking that time to plan out your day really does pay you back. Dressing her best for the day. Now, particularly when the boys were young and I was at home, uh, if I didn't get dressed, which I often didn't when we had newborns, Tim would get home from work, I'd still be in my pajamas, still dreaming of that shower. Uh, but if I needed to then run out, I would choose not to do jobs because that would mean I'd have to get dressed and everything seemed like a real effort. So now what I do is I make sure that I get dressed first thing in the morning. In fact, I aim to wake up before the kids to allow myself the time to get ready before they get up because being dressed and ready for the day and whatever it throws at you is is a good thing. And it means that if I remember that I needed to do something or if I need to go to the post office, I need to pick up a few groceries, I'm already ready to go and I can just duck out. There are so many people that don't get dressed because they're stay-at-home mums or perhaps, you know, they have a day off. And every now and then I think that's a fabulous thing. I think pajama days are excellent. I set out to do pajama days here at our house uh, a few times a year. Hey, do you need something? No, but um, I definitely do think the majority of the time it's a good thing to get up and to get dressed and ready for the day ahead. Go for a walk if you have the time. I don't in the morning, but there are a number of people that like to start, uh, to start their day with a walk. Certainly a positive way to start your day. I do my walk in the afternoon or evening because that is where I have that time. Focusing on your mindset, doing a 15 minute tidy up. So kickstart your day with some decluttering. In the morning is when I'm most productive because I've had a good night's sleep. So if I have a big decluttering job in front of me and I have um, a goal for the month to get on top of the space, then the morning is certainly the best time of the day for me to do that because I know that I'm a lot more motivated in the morning than I am in the evening. Put a load of laundry on and the last dot point, which should probably be the first dot point, is not to go onto social media until you're ready for your day. So do not go on it until you have done everything you want to do because what happens is the minute you open up your phone and you start scrolling, you spot something that's interesting or you end up in your cousin's, sister's, friend's, husband's Facebook page. And Facebook really is a land that allows people to get lost sometimes, which is a positive thing sometimes, but certainly in the morning, if you're trying to get a lot done and you have a big day ahead of you, I would highly recommend that you complete your morning routine before you open your phone. So that has certainly helped a lot of people in the past. Now, I would not recommend that you try all of those or a number of those at the same time. If you don't have a morning routine, think about one thing that'll make the biggest difference for you and start with that. When that becomes normal and when that becomes a habit, then move on to the next thing. But they are just some ideas that I thought I'd throw out. And uh, sometimes uh, the ideas that I throw out aren't ideas that will necessarily help your family, but it gives you a starting point to think about what might help or how you can tweak things so that it will work better in your home. All right. When you are overwhelmed, start small. I say this over and over and over. I feel like a little bit of a stuck record, but in anything, when someone comes to me and says the task ahead of them starts it feels too big. I always say start small. Uh, of course, there are people that want to throw themselves straight in and get it done in a hurry. And that's fine. And that's a good thing. And you often achieve what you set out to achieve. But the problem is that in the long term, you might fall back into the same bad habits as you had before. So starting small and focusing on making what you're doing a habit rather than the big task in front of you will mean that it pays off in the long run and that hopefully the issue that you're facing now never gets as big as it is again. So 15 minute tidy ups. Now I asked people online to share a few things that had helped them. And I particularly asked for before and after photos, if anyone was brave enough to share them for me. And Sarah Jones, who has a blog, uh, a Facebook page called Keeping Up With The Joneses, she very kindly shared her 15 minute before and after tidy ups. And I thought they were such a good example of the amazing things you can achieve in 15 minutes. All right, now, uh, before I show you those photos, I'm just gonna go through some tidy up strategies 
for 15 minute tidy ups. The first one there is what I just spoke about before and that is to put your phone down. If you are trying to have a useful 15 minutes, then you don't want to be interrupted by your phone every minute or every few minutes because your 15 minutes is going to be far less effective. So put your phone away, turn it on silent and focus on the tasks that you set out for yourself uh, for 15 minutes. And do know that at the end of the 15 minutes, your messages or notifications will still be there. 15 minutes is not a long time for someone to wait. Uh, before you begin, set a goal, decide what you want to achieve and then stick to it. Do not change your goal. And this happens often. I hear people say they began in their kitchen, but when they went to take something from the kitchen back to one of the kids' bedrooms, they spotted something in the kids' bedroom. So they started doing some tidying up there and then they spotted something else and they moved on. Uh, that is not going to get you as much done as it would if you set out a goal of one space or two spaces, whatever you decide on, and then stuck to what you set out to achieve. Yes, there may be other things to do in other rooms. There always will be. But there are other days and other 15-minute tidy-ups to do where you can use that time for the things that you've spotted. On the day that you're doing your 15-minute tidy-up, when you set your goal, do not change it. If you've decided on the kitchen, do the kitchen. If you've decided on the lounge room, do the lounge room. Don't change what your goal is. And then if you finish the 15 minutes, on your goal space and you still have the motivation to do more and you want to do those few things you spotted by all means do them then but really try and stick to what you set out to do in those 15 minutes do not stop while you're doing the 15 minutes uh, now of course if a child is hurt or something goes wrong common sense says yes you should stop but what I mean is don't stop for the little things and we've really created that in our home where the kids know when I put the timer on for 15 minutes that I'm not going to stop to cut something open for them and I'm not going to stop to do uh, other bits and pieces I check everyone's fine before we begin the 15 minute tidy up and then I focus for 15 minutes and whatever they need can be done after the 15 minutes but we really have created that um, strategy in our home where we just do the 15 minutes and they know when they are doing a tidy up that's being timed, they do the same thing. So try not to stop for bits and pieces and of course have something to look forward to. So I always recommend rewarding yourself with something little, maybe a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, flicking through a magazine, whatever it is that you enjoy doing or just say to yourself, I'll do a 15 minute tidy up and then I'll have a 15 minute break uh, to do what I want to do. But certainly don't make it something that you dread and uh, the best way to uh, do something is to have something to look forward to, which is what we do in our home. Now, there have been times, many times, where I don't feel like doing the 15-minute tidy up every day. And uh, I'll say to Tim, don't want to do it tonight. We'll just skip tonight. And it's funny to watch over the years as we've really begin to, begun to value 15-minute tidy ups, how we come up with different strategies. So Tim will say to me, what if we do seven and a half minutes each? Then we're not doing a lot of cleaning time, but we're still achieving the same thing. Uh, we've come up with all sorts of different things and you do what works best in your home. But I'd highly recommend that you try the 15-minute tidy up. You will be so surprised at what you can achieve in that time time and uh, often when someone sends me a picture of their room that has things from the floor to ceiling no exaggeration things everywhere and they say I don't know where to begin it's so overwhelming and I write back and say to them do 15 minutes a day that's all you've got to do they write back and you can tell that they don't really trust the process they just want me to give them a quick fix and I say, no, it's about creating the habit so that that space never gets back to where it is now. And I just love receiving the messages a few weeks down the track of the amazing progress that they've made and just to see how those 15-minute tidy-ups add up. Now, you can do the maths. You do 15-minute tidy-ups every day, seven days a week over a month and then a few months or a year. The amount of time that you've invested 100% focused to getting on top of decluttering or tidying or whatever it is that you want to achieve really does add up. And you can use this strategy for absolutely anything. It doesn't have to be tidy-ups. It doesn't have to be decluttering. It could be something you're working on that seems too big a task. It could be if you have to write something out, if you're doing a uni assignment. There's all sorts of things that you can use the 15 minute tidy up strategies for uh, but if it seems if 15 minutes seems too much start with 10 minutes uh, if that's too much start with five it's really about slowly building up 
to the point that you've created a really healthy habit. And once you get on top of the spaces you're wanting to declutter, then you can use the 15 minute tidy ups to just maintain your house. And uh, I tell people all the time when I'm doing zone cleaning, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, uh, often I'll set the time of 15 minutes to focus on that space. And after three or four minutes, I'm done because now that we do it consistently, nothing really gets out of hand. And that is the beauty of creating a strategy that is sustainable and one that you won't fall off the bandwagon with. All right. So like I said, Sarah Jones sent these photos in. I just love them. Uh, I don't know when she originally shared these, whether it was a Project 14 on her blog page, but this is obviously a kid's playroom, certainly not the messiest playroom I've ever seen. Uh, most people would have a playroom that looks very similar. It looks like the kids have had a really good day. But when you get to the end of the day, you've had a big day, you're probably not really looking forward to cleaning that up. And when you look at it, you think, gosh, that could take me a little while because there's bits and pieces all over the place. Sarah set her timer for 15 minutes and this is what the room looked like when she'd finished. Amazing. So good. All right, here's another one. So this is then a... Um, the view of her living and kitchen space. Again, uh, uh, average day. I'm sure if she has two beautiful girls, if they're both at home, they've had a big day, she's been busy with something, uh, I'm sure we can all relate to getting to the end of the day and us looking around and thinking, gosh, how did that even happen? Uh, so she set her 15 minute tidy, uh, her 15 minute timer. And like I always say to people, don't aim to get the space completely done because that can sometimes seem overwhelming. Just set the timer decide that when the timer goes off at the end of the 15 minutes that you've finished what you set out to do and that you've achieved your goal. And uh, she did that. And that's what her space looked like after the 15 minutes. Amazing. So cool. I just love looking at 15 minute uh, tidying up photos or decluttering photos before and afters because you really do get to see how short a time it takes. And often when I look around our house and I just think, gosh, this is going to take me hours to tidy up, it actually doesn't. If you put your phone down, you get rid of distractions, you focus for 15 minutes very quickly, you can get on top of your spaces. And I was really so grateful that Sarah sent these in because I think they really do show you what you can achieve in 15 minutes. It stops you stressing during the day. If you have a big day, it's causing you stress because you think I don't have the time to tidy that up at the end of the day. Just remember your 15 minute timer. All right. And the last thing that we're going to talk about tonight is zone cleaning. Now, if you've heard about zone cleaning before, it might be from Fly Lady. She is amazing. Uh, definitely go and have a look at what she's done. Uh, I think she has an app as well. And uh, what Fly Lady came up with was every week you would focus on a different zone in your house. So you might do kitchen cupboards one week and then the following week it might have been your entryway and she sends out your task every week of what you want to achieve. So if you're wanting something extra, a little challenge to do every week, I'd highly recommend going over to her page. I think she's American, maybe she's British. I'll have to double check now. Um, but yeah, absolutely incredible. A huge following and she has made a difference in a lot of people's lives. Now, when I talk about zone cleaning, it began using Fly Lady zone cleaning and then I adapted it, which is what I talk about all the time. I tell people what works for one, pe one person won't work for every person and you really need to make it your own. So what I did was I decided that I often cleaned our living areas because they were the areas that people saw. But then if you went into my cupboards or the master bedroom or the kids' bedroom behind closed doors, things were a little chaotic. And so I spent all my time in the same spaces every day and other spaces in the house got very little attention. And so I set out to create zone cleaning in my house that I did daily. And by the end of the week, I had... Um, completed every single or most spaces in our home. Now I started small because that's what I always recommend. So if you are beginning zone cleaning and I'll share my zone cleaning uh, template on the next page, but if you're beginning zone cleaning, I recommend that you split your home into six or seven spaces, depending on whether you want to do zone cleaning six days a week or seven days a week. Uh, a number of people, since I've shown my zone cleaning routine, will choose to have a day off. I personally don't have a day off because it's just 15 minutes a day, but it's completely up to you uh, what's going to work best in your family. But divide your home into six or seven spaces, depending on whether you're doing it for six or seven days, and then choose one zone that you're going to focus on per day. 
Now, on a typical week, what you want to do is you want to choose the most difficult zone. So the zone that you dread doing or the zone that you dislike the most on the day that you have the quietest day and you want to choose the easiest zone, the one that takes you, you know, you're often in there cleaning or it won't take you as long. You want to choose that zone on a day that you have, um, that you have, a quiet day. I just got distracted by the boys going past. So on your quietest day, choose the zone that needs the most attention. And on the busiest day of the week, choose the easiest zone. And then you want to just be specific about how you're going to tackle it. So the way that I tackle the 15 minutes is I start with decluttering. I look at the space. If there's anything that's made its way into the space or into our house that we're no longer keeping, I remove that first. That saves me tidying it up when it really doesn't belong in the space. So I start with decluttering, then I tidy, then I clean. And then if I have time, I vacuum and lastly if I've been super fast or gotten on top of the space like I have now then I might have uh, time to dust as well so decide what order you're going to do it there's obviously no right or wrong some people choose to vacuum first and then uh, tidy up afterwards so they get the space clean and then tidy I choose for the space to look tidy first and then to do the cleaning and sometimes I run out of time that's perfectly okay so we're just setting out to do as much as you can in that 15 minutes over time the more that you do this type of zone cleaning the easier the zones will be so in your first week you might think you get to the end of the 15 minutes and you still have heaps to do that's perfectly normal keep going persist persevere and as you go week after week of doing those 15 minute tidy ups you'll find that you get more and more done in the time and eventually the space may not even take you 15 minutes a night which is where I'm at now Okay, so what I have here is just an example of what my zone cleaning looked like in 2017. That is the one on the left. And then what it looks like now on the right. Now, I do not recommend that anyone jump straight to the one on the right because it's obviously taken me time to get there. When I set out on for, to do zone cleaning, I started with on a Monday doing laundry. That is not doing washing. That is tidying, decluttering, vacuuming, wiping down the actual laundry. On a Tuesday, I chose the home office because that was the day that I wasn't teaching. It was my quietest day. And the home office was where I, a lot of bills piled up, lots of paperwork, random things that didn't have homes ended up in the office and so I knew that was one that needed my attention I put on a Tuesday on a Wednesday the kids rooms Thursday the master bedroom Friday the bathroom Saturday the kitchen and then Sunday I had it as a declutter and tidy day so that's where I began and I would just do 15 minutes each day uh, to help me get on top of those spaces to declutter them and then once they were decluttered after a few months I then used that time to tidy up, tidy them and maintain them for 2018, I moved to doing two spaces every night. And uh, that's certainly been because I created a habit of one. One no longer seems difficult. Now we're on to two. And I really did swap things around as I worked out what would work best in our family. So as an example, you can see that I've added in uh, cleaning the car on a Friday now, uh, doing the garage. And I've also got outdoors in there, which didn't exist in the zone cleaning the year before. So it's allowed me a bit more breathing room as I got on top of other spaces, I was able to start working on new spaces. And that's the right hand side, whilst it seems like a lot doesn't overwhelm me because I've been doing it for such a long time. So on a Monday is the bedroom and home cinema, just notice how I've paired an easy space with a more difficult one, the home cinema being easier and the master bedroom being a space that we often have cups and plates or the boys toys, different things that need to be moved out. On a Tuesday, I've introduced doing the pantry and lounge dining on a Wednesday, laundry and bathroom rooms Thursday office and kitchen Friday is the car and garage the car has been added in there to maintain it but also on a Friday because I have an hour on my Friday in my Friday mornings that between when I drop the boys off at their school and when I have to be at work I have this annoying little hour that's not quite long enough for me to go home but not uh, short enough to really go straight to work. So I use that time to do the car now. And then on a Saturday, I moved the kids' bedrooms to a Saturday because guess what? When I set the 15-minute tidy up, they help. They're at home. It's their weekend, obviously. Set the time 15 minutes and they jump in and help. Now, the beauty of timers is that if you say to a kid, you've got to clean for 15 minutes, the only way you can clean for less time is if the room is tidy before the 15 minutes finishes. You watch how much faster they clean their room than if you just ask them to clean their room without giving them a time limit. So if you say, go and clean your bedroom 
all of a sudden they're dragging themselves around. It's a big task. They're taking one shoe at a time. Uh, it can take a very long time to clean their room. Where if you set a time out, a bit of a challenge for them, particularly younger kids, uh, and I know in our house, boys, they are quite competitive and they want to beat the timer. So give that a go. Of course, I'm often in there helping them. And uh, that just means that I get to see what's happening in their room, what storage is working, what I need to change what things they're starting to collect, all those fun things that uh, often make their way into kids' bedrooms. On a Saturday, I also have outdoors because they're mostly outside playing. So while they're playing, I can get them to pick up a few balls or I can just be out there pottering around doing a 15-minute tidy up while the family is enjoying the outdoors. And then on a Sunday, I do our fridge and freezer because Monday is bin day. So I specifically chose that zone on that day because it works well if we have any leftovers or food that's gone off that needs to go into the bin, then that works in well for us on a Sunday night. So that is what it looks like now. Of course, if you try to do exactly the same zone cleaning in your home, you might find that it doesn't work at all because the days that I have a quieter day, you might have a busier day, vice versa, or perhaps two rooms that I've paired together are actually both difficult rooms in your in your house. You really do need to just set out a goal of what zone you're going to do on what day and then keep changing it until you find a schedule that works well for you. So when I started out, I chose what I was going to do each day. Over time, I saw what worked and what didn't work and I just changed it slowly until I found a system that really made a difference for us. Okay, so that was this week's focus and I'm going to see if there is a way if I stop sharing the screen, I think I might come back to a full screen. Let's see. Bear with me for a second. Okay. I think so. I don't know if Tim's watching to be able to tell me if I've done anything wrong, but that is what we focused on in the worksheet on Tuesday uh, or in the workshop on Tuesday that was splitting a day into three 15-minute tidy ups and zone cleaning. Hopefully one or all of those strategies have been able to help you and uh, given you some ideas on how to get on top of things. Just remember no task is too big. I know when you're starting, particularly in a house that you feel is very cluttered and there's chaos everywhere, that it's just too big a job. You nearly feel defeated before you've even begun. Just begin. You'll be so grateful that you did. If you do 15 minutes for a week, you'll start to see the difference and it'll make more and more. You'll see a snowball effect as you do the 15 minute tidy ups. And once you start to see that snowball effect, you begin to see the value in what you're doing. And then all of a sudden it becomes easier to do what you're doing because you've seen some results. So I think the first few weeks are always the most difficult because you're not quite seeing results yet. Uh, you feel like you're doing a lot of work and not seeing anything in return, but keep at it. It pays off and you'll be glad that you did it. Why not start today or tomorrow? Uh, then leave it another week and let more accumulate. Begin now, get those healthy habits uh, into place in your home so that as you make progress, you can make sure that what you are dealing with now doesn't happen again uh, in a few months time. So not saying that no one falls off a band bandwagon. Most people do. But I think the beauty is to notice when you have stopped doing what you set out to do and jump straight back on because the minute you jump back on, it makes it easier than waiting another few days and letting the mess build up. So begin as soon as you can and uh, give it a go. You might as well. Let me know if it helps. And uh, I would love to see before and afters. So before I look at the comments or ask Tim about the comments, I would highly recommend that you take a before photo of a space that you feel overwhelmed by. You do not need to share it with anyone, but I would highly recommend that you do because you won't notice the incredible difference you are making until a few weeks or a month passes and you look back at that before photo. Some people forget what the room was like when they started. So I would highly recommend you take that before photo, just like you take before photos if you're on a health journey to see your progress. Take a before photo because you might not want to take it now. You might be embarrassed by it now, but I promise you won't be embarrassed by it when you're showing everyone the difference that you made and uh, you're showing everyone, you know, the work that, oh, thank you, the work that you put in looking back. So, oh, thank you. So um, definitely take those before photos because you'll be glad you did. I have a few before photos. I might have to grab them out for next week's live video, but I have a before photo of our kitchen and I think I have one that was actually a progress photo of our office, but I thought 
it was finished. So I took it as an after photo, which I now use as a before photo. And I'm glad I have those photos, but I wish I'd taken more of them to be able to see the, the, the massive difference that we've had in our home as we put these things into place. All right, now Tim has his phone on the wrong setting. So I'm just gonna move my screen for a second over here and see if I can, no, I might have to answer them afterwards. Do you do 15 minutes in your zone and then a different 15 minutes for general cleaning during the day, like dishes and stuff after dinner? Okay, yes, I get asked this all the time. I should be more specific. So I do do the 15 minutes separately now, but when I started out, when it was all new to me and it all seemed like a lot of effort, I just did 15 minutes a night. So I actually just began with dinner dishes and that sort of thing. I focused on creating the habit of doing 15 minutes a night rather than beginning the decluttering process. So after dinner had finished, I would put the timer on for 15 minutes and I would tidy up our dinner dishes, the kitchen, maybe the dining room, a bit of school lunchbox things, um, but nothing else. And then once I got into the habit of 15 minute tidy ups every night, then I started to do 15 minutes for dinner and 15 minutes for zone cleaning. And uh, I've obviously built up from there. But when you are beginning, if you don't have a cleaning routine in place or you don't have any systems in place, I would just focus on getting into the habit of 15 minutes a night, just one. Don't start too big. Don't try and do 15 minutes of this and 15 minutes of that. Uh, just start with 15 minutes entirely. Get that into a habit. Once you've done it for a couple of weeks, then start to make those changes and add to it. But I think the main thing and my main message always to everyone is not necessarily to focus on the craziness to start with. It's to focus on the routines you're setting up and the healthy habits that you're creating in your home because they are going to pay you back in the long term. Uh, and you don't want to wear yourself out right from the start because then you're not going to stick to it. All right, I think we're good. Crazy sitting next to me. He must need me. Uh, so I'll upload this to YouTube. I will then add it on Tuesday next week. A few people asked for friends that aren't on Facebook that they could share it with. So it'll go onto YouTube next Tuesday along with the worksheets if you want to join in. If you have any comments about anything I've shared during the video tonight or you have some success stories or perhaps you're just beginning your journey, I would love to hear all about it. This little hand, you want to wave, darling? You want to say hello quickly. Um, I would love to hear all about it. Just comment below and uh, we can chat in the comment section. But thank you for joining me. I hope it's been helpful. And next week we are looking at goal setting and budgeting in the workshop I do on Tuesday. So, of course, that will be what you hear on Thursday. It'll be a good one. Thank you. Bye.